This is a hot holiday gift. There are several brands on the market. They look fun. In 2015, there was a rush of this new item. More of a battery-powered skateboard, but nevertheless called the hoverboard. They were just flooding Amazon. <laughs> But suddenly batteries went up in flames. It's on fire! Fire departments were seeing this and were very concerned. The hoverboard ignited while it was being charged and actually rolled over to a bed and ignited the bedding in the bedroom. Amazon is removing most brands from its site. And I started to notice this pattern. I found there were many other examples of items that were not complying with safety standards that are set by governmental bodies or were set by Amazon. They were being thrown up online and sold to the public. More and more consumers are becoming accustomed to shopping online. Oh, that's a low price. With better prices, with better reliability and convenience, e-commerce is slowly every year growing in its size. Unfortunately, e-commerce is one of the main ways illicit goods can enter into circulation. We found 52 supplements that had been identified by the FDA and the Justice Department as containing illegal prescription drugs. There were several hundred masks that were not approved by the FDA. 4,510 balloons without choking hazard warnings. And 3,644 toys without the proper warning labels. No consumer is willingly buying products which can potentially injure their child. Hospital officials confirm they are treating her son for ingesting magnets. Unfortunately, the refund is irrelevant if they actually had damage to them or their kids. My name is Alexandra Burzon. I'm a reporter in the investigations group of The Wall Street Journal. When I started looking at this incredible growth in the marketplace of Amazon, I started to see this potential consumer safety issues. A salon-grade hair dryer on Amazon, fresh out of the box. Oh my gosh. We found thousands of products that were misrepresenting safety, saying they had certain compliance that they didn't have, claiming to be FDA approved. Trying to misrepresent and tell the consumer that this item is safe when it's not. So I ordered this. It's a baby sleep positioner. The FDA has said that these are not safe because it can cause suffocation. Every so often, I'll go and just look for the sleep positioner. And without fail, within 30 seconds, I will always find it. Let's see, there it is. Yeah, it's the second non-sponsored one. Here's another one. So we've seen, what, now at least four. It's even more this time. Eight, nine, whoa, 11. Yeah, we've already found a whole bunch. A lot more than I had seen like when I looked at this last time. It looks like the baby from the box that I had ordered. This is the one that the person is selling on Amazon. This is Amazon's own picture of what not to sell on Amazon. It used to be that you would walk into a store and you understood that this store had assembled the products for you. You know, they might have a few suppliers and they have a pretty good idea of who those suppliers are. They also have a legal liability for the integrity of those products. eBay is fast and easy. Marketplaces online really changed that model. Walmart, Etsy, Wish, Alibaba, Targets, and other marketplaces. With Amazon being the leading one. Amazon, when they started, was selling products directly, and they built up a lot of trust through that. Then, at some point, they decided, well, you know what, we could take that trust and we could actually extend it to a whole bunch of other people who are third-party sellers. Any business from anywhere can go into Amazon and create a seller account. 60% or more of their sales globally are actually coming from those third-party sellers. The things you're buying, no one has actually handpicked to be sold to you. Everything is automated. And it's also probably coming from a foreign country far, far away. E-commerce is great just like a market with different stands, with different vendors, but it also becoming increasingly misused or abused by criminals. They don't care about norms, they don't care about rules, regulations. What they look for is money. So any opportunity 
that arises is immediately exploited by them. Most retailers, they enforce quality checks and they can often physically inspect products by sending their staff to the actual factories. The open marketplace model Amazon is running prevents Amazon from enforcing the same checks and balances in place because it's not a thing you can do for millions of individual third-party sellers. Here's another one. After we sent Amazon a list of every product that we found, they did take many of them down. And then again, we would find that this problem would just kind of pop back up. People are attempting to get through their barriers and get to consumers. A Tennessee family is suing Amazon for $30 million for negligence after a hoverboard caused a fire that destroyed their home. What happens if something goes wrong? What protections do you then have? We found one case where someone had died in a motorcycle accident and the motorcycle helmet said that it was certified by the Department of Transportation, and it turns out it wasn't. The family wanted somebody to uh, be responsible for that. Amazon argues that it's not liable for the products that it sells by third-party sellers. So Amazon is providing the platform, payment processing, the item is stored at the Amazon warehouse, and then Amazon is shipping it in an Amazon box. But Amazon says at no point in that process are we the actual seller of the item. We are just the platform. The company that actually sold the helmet through Amazon was just this one man who basically didn't have enough money to pay for lawyers and they got a judgment of I think over a million dollars, but like how are they gonna collect that? Amazon actually did agree to pay without admitting any guilt or anything. They paid $5,000. There's a whole regulatory structure and legal structure in the U.S. that's based on the idea of stores selling items. With marketplaces online, this liability is still being worked out. I think consumers have shown that they really like online marketplaces, but consumers could become more aware of what they're buying and where it's coming from. Of course, at the end of the day, we have lots of products that are cheap, but for criminals, it means lots of opportunities for infiltration and for profits. The bad actors will always find ways to evolve, and it's a never-ending battle trying to limit them.